Doomfist. Cool villain, but bad hero. I've heard a lot of people talk about how difficult the hero is, how annoying Doomfist is to play against, and yet I very rarely see too many Doomfist players in my games, and the Overwatch community doesn't seem to rate him too highly. So what's going on? To find out, I decided to spend 7 days learning Doomfist to understand why this hero is supposedly so tough and hard to deal with, and yet not having much of an impact on the Overwatch community. Plus, I got coached by one of the world's best Doomfist players. So the first thing I felt when I loaded into playing Doomfist in my first game was, what the hell am I doing? Like, I genuinely have no idea. Like Wrecking Ball previously, Doomfist has a very unique set of mechanics. Unlike a lot of traditional tanks who can just press W and fight, Doomfist is all about his mobility and his cooldowns are both used for movement and for doing damage. Both his seismic slam and trademark punch can do damage to enemies but are also his only ways to maneuver in and out of the fight and if he's not moving around he's a bit of a sitting duck. So immediately I found myself a little confused as to how to best approach playing this guy. It doesn't come easy and there were certainly a lot of fails along the way. But I decided I'd just try and roughly replicate what I saw the Doomfists in my games do. Punch people around and be a nuisance. And to begin with, it worked. Really well. Once I got a few hours under my belt, I was feeling pretty impactful and powerful and even went on a win streak where I won 9 out of 10 games, climbing all the way to Master 5 in the process. But as well as my results were going, I kind of felt like I was fluking my way to wins, almost like I was button mashing in a fighting game to get a few cheap scores. I knew there had to be a more scientific approach to Doomfist, and so I decided to call on some expert help nice and early. Samido is one of the world's best Doomfist players, having peaked rank 1 playing him when he was still in the DPS category. He's also been the rank 1 combined player on NA ladder and is a tier 2 level contenders coach. He's also really good at explaining Overwatch concepts clearly and so I decided to recruit him to train my Doomfist gameplay. And wow was it an experience. Sam's approach to Doomfist and Overwatch in general was almost like military strategy, focused on trying to create multiple tension points to overwhelm opponents and stretch their resources too thin. You yeah. want to create what's called a triangle. And the triangle is like, if you have an enemy inside the triangle, they die. And each point of the mm. triangle is a player on your team creating off angles and pinching. I mean, this is literally how Germany lost World War II, right? The, like where, where they took a war on two fronts. It's that same similar concept where it's like, you win so much more when you create these triangle angles or create these off angles and Doom is a character that compounds, you should always look to do that. So if you recognize the lack of cooldowns, especially if your teammates taking that duel, always go fight there. On top of that, he taught me about the proper cycle of Doomfist cooldowns and also how you want to patiently lurk and bait out important cooldowns using a little trick called the corner slam. Instead of punching in, this is what I always do for the to maximize CD cycle. And you don't always have to do this, right? Mm -hmm. I slam in, right? Just think about it like this. When you slam in, right, that's an eight second cooldown. And then you punch, right, after you get the killing of the kill, that's a four second cooldown. By the time right. you're done punching, both of those cooldowns would be at four seconds instead of like you having to wait the entire eight after you punch. So I want you to really focus on uh, one, that, that free fight when the card's not positioned and your team's not set up for a dive, just be slamming, slam punch, slam punch in and out really fast because you'll build ult and maybe you'll bait a cooldown for your next dive. Like that's how, you know, Winston, you're always supposed to do a soft dive first, a soft jump and not yeah, just go straight yeah. in, right? It's the same thing for Doomfist, but you're building shields for your next dive and you're building a ton of ult charge, which will give you your empowered punch and like your big, big, like I need to win the fight cycle um, you. with your ult. I go under bridge and just like quickly slam like an angle you're slam right where you're looking right now when they're trying to cross. Oh, okay, um, okay. So like wait for them to go here, hit cross. slam and then punch yeah. out. It if they don't have full dive, like their DPS can't help their doom. Like their team should be able to survive their doom on their own. They do have a Genji. You can slam and punch out now if you want to. Just see what you can get. Yep, seven, seven, eight percent, dude, from that. Thanks to Samido's coaching, I was finally understanding Doomfist, not just playing him. I wasn't just brainlessly punching around and spamming my cooldowns, I was deliberately looking for engagements at the right times, in the right ways. Thinking about when to peel for my team, and when to go in deeper for a kill. Great peel, great peel. There we go, there we go, perfect, every time. 
the one thing I think you could do better is being aware of when to peel and draw aggro. Like, you see how much better it was and how, how much their Doom just died or you forced his ult when you just peeled straight back. The higher up you go, the less people will charge that power block, by the way. Oh, go get the hog. Yeah, yeah, go get him. Nice. Nice, dude. Good recognition. Good recognition. Perfect. The final major point I got from Sam was just the power of staying alive as Doomfist. Whereas most Doomfists just feed and die on cooldown as we all sadly know, Sam was stressing the importance of making sure I act as an anchor presence on point and use my cooldowns to stay alive to buy time for my team. For anyone out of position right now. Sam, 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 behind you. Sam's a priority target, the fight goes on, you just lose. Yeah, there it is. There's a kill. There's a kill. There's a kill. No way. Last fight. I'm just going to hold here. Nice, SVB. Nice. Oh, my God. The value of living. This place has got Spanish speed at him. Staggering. Next old card because you know they got a touch. Dude, that's so good. Not, that's Ooh. so perfect. That is Ooh. so pixel perfect, Doomfist. Actually pixel perfect. That's why, like, living on this character and your CD cycling is so freaking good. It's so good. Do you see how, what was so good about that is you used your PB not only as a defensive tool, but to get that extra punch to keep you alive so much, mm. dude. And you just live. After about an hour and a half of coaching, the full video for which you guys can see on my second channel, I had gotten a big chunk of new things to think about, and Sam was so proud of my Doomfist that he was ready to set me off into the wider world. You're, you're, I, I actually would take you on Doom over Flats. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> no. I felt really confident, so much so that I was certain I'd hit GM by the end of this week playing only Doomfist. This might end up being my most successful hero learning journey, honestly. I might end up, I, I think I'll hit GM at this rate, but would it be that straightforward? Fuck no. Having understood so much about Doomfist, I thought I was ready to face any challenge sent my way, but the Overwatch community had other ideas. As soon as I had gotten to Diamond, I started to see a huge number of counter swaps to target my pick as soon as I would win one fight as Doomfist, and this only got worse in Master. It was relentless. The enemy tank would lose one engagement, then go swap to Orisa or in some cases Hog and just chase me around the map. Spear interrupts my block. If Orisa fortifies in my face, I can't punch past her and if she spins at me with her stupid baton thing, then I'm getting pushed into a corner I don't want to be in. If that wasn't annoying enough, there would almost always be a Sombra pick to back that up too. On their own, any of these picks were fine. I could deal with one Orisa, one Sombra, or even one Ana Zen backline that constantly discorded, anti-nated and slept me. But combined, I basically couldn't play the game. I just can't play the game. It was exhausting playing through this. I don't expect sympathy because I opted into one tricking Doomfist for a week, but my god, did this experience feel lame. The annoying part is that I'd be playing well, thinking really deeply about my gameplay and trying to be very deliberate about what I do, but all the enemy team had to do was just pick these handful of heroes and they kind of just won for free, AFK existing. I was working twice as hard for half the value. Oh my fucking god! This is so fun. My progress stalled completely. 
and my win rate went to about 55%. Still enough to climb, but very slowly. And the experience of playing Doomfist became painful. By the sixth day, I just kind of wanted it to end. So what is my conclusion? Well, this Doomfist journey has given me a lot of thoughts about Overwatch as a whole, particularly around the whole dynamic of counter picking and counter swapping. I actually kept count and in one third of my games, the enemy tank switched to Orisa and in another one third of my games, the enemy DPS switched to Sombra, sometimes overlapping, sometimes not. That is a batshit number. In one of every three games, people's entire playstyle was just to stop me playing the game. What kind of fun is that? Now I know the counterpoint here. People will say that, well, Doomfist is annoying too. That if there are heroes picked to make his life miserable, he'll make the enemy team's life miserable with all his crowd control abilities. But then, isn't that indicating something very wrong with all of this? What are we saying about Doomfist then? That he's a hero I can only pick for some of the match before the enemy team counter swaps and I have to change my hero in turn if I want to keep playing the game. And then we keep going with this cycle endlessly like we were playing a bunch of musical chairs. I thought the point of Overwatch was to play the heroes you like to play, not cycle through the entire roster just for the sake of winning. When did enjoyment and skill expression stop being a priority? Honestly, it just seems obvious to me that we need a hero draft system in Overwatch if heroes like Doomfist are to exist and thrive. People complain about the idea of hero bans, saying that they don't like the idea of their favorite hero not being pickable, but out of a roster of 37 heroes, the odds of your hero being banned are very low. Compare that to right now, when everyone can counterpick all the time, and 30% of my games, my hero is being soft banned anyways. Realistically, I have to switch. So while Doomfist is fun to play and hard to master, I don't think I'll be playing him too much. Because for all the skill and time I spend trying to play this hero properly, there will always be the option for the enemy team to just go pick his hard counters and say goodbye to any joy I was going to have picking the Numbani based brawler. And that's all I got for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, come check out my next hero learning journey at twitch.tv forward slash svb underscore. I'll be learning a DPS next, but I haven't decided who, so drop your suggestions in the comment section, or you can come to my stream where I'll be putting up a poll for my viewers to vote in live so that we can decide what I want to learn next. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons who do the awesome job supporting me, and if you'd like to support me, you can head on down to the link in the video description, or just hit the like and subscribe buttons. But that's it for now, I'll be back before you know it with another video, see you guys soon.